What's going on everybody, it's Q from Retro Q Gaming and you all know when you see the blue wall and the shoddy lighting it can only mean one thing. That's right, we got unboxing time. And we got something a little bit different just to unbox with us here today. Granted it's still video game related but it's primarily something else. It's going to be good, it's going to be great, it's going to be very interesting to see how it goes. I haven't unboxed it or touched it at all, it's still in its original wrap because I like to do this stuff legit. Over the past year or so, I've basically alluded to a secret Kickstarter I've pledged to. I never went ahead and mentioned what it actually was, specifically so I could do this extravagant, extra large unboxing. So in order to do that, let's get started. First up, of many, many things, we have our Resident Evil 2 board game. That's right, Steam Forged Games on Kickstarter, known for other famous projects that have gone down really, really well and have been pretty damn high quality set out to do an officially licensed Resident Evil 2 board game. This kit was kickstarted about over a year ago, probably towards the latter half of 2017, and it finally, finally arrived, for me at least anyway, on New Year's Eve 2018. But we're not stopping there, simply because we have a lot to get through here today. Because not only was every single stretch goal on the Kickstarter met, but I opted in for a couple of optional extras. A couple is a bit of an understatement, so let's see what else came with this whole deal. Other than just the main core board game, we also have the B-Files expansion. And not stopping there, we've got the Survival Horror expansion. We'll take a look at every one of these in detail over the course of this unboxing. But for now, let's just get a good idea of the size and scope of what we're talking here. We also got ourselves a Fort Survivor expansion. For those of you familiar with Resident Evil 2, you already know who the Force Survivor is and what the deal is there. We've also got our Retro Pack expansion. Of course, it's me. It has to be retro, naturally, of course. But not only that, it's Resident Evil 2. The game in itself is retro, in the best of ways. And there's no way we're even done there, because we have our Resident Evil 2 board game Survivor Pledge Kickstarter exclusive alternate sculpts. Most of the Kickstarter bonuses, not all of them, but a lot of them were alternate sculpts for different character pieces, such as an injured Leon S. Kennedy. That's quite the amount of content we have there, isn't it? And it's this, this is getting pretty packed, so let's just make a little bit more room, because we are not done. We have, of course, it's Resident Evil 2, it's campy, it's quirky, the Giant Alligator expansion. Now, when they said Giant Alligator Expansion, they mean it. Look at the size of this box compared to the actual rest of these boxes. It's the same size. It literally is a Giant Alligator. It's still sealed. I can't wait to see what it actually looks like. But we're not even done there yet. We have the Murder From Above Expansion. We'll get into what's incorporated in all of these throughout the entire video. But before that, we're just going to look at everything as it came in my personal order because we still, still have more to go with the Malformations of G expansion and the Malformations of G B-Files expansion. Naturally, these two are to go one with the core board game, the other one to go with the B-Files. And because I opted in for the Malformations of G expansion, I actually only expected to get one of these. I didn't realize there was a separate one going to be included for the B-Files. I had assumed that the Malformations of G was just one big expansion incorporating all the different forms of G, or the G virus. Now hold on to your dice and your lockpicks because we still have just a few more to go. We've also got our 3D door upgrade set, let's hope we can get this to stand up properly. Well, we'll show it off first. It's the 3D door upgrade set. This one gives you actual model sculpts of doors and doorways and whatnot to be used on the boards because usually they just come with little tablets and little standard tiles. It's the same as our little 3D terrain upgrade set here. Usually you'd have stuff like ink ribbons and typewriters and a couple of other various things. Usually they'd be on little kind of standard tiles, but I opted for the 3D ones just to make them look that little bit better as proper 3D miniature sculpts. I'm very happy I actually went with these two, with the 3D door set and the 3D terrain upgrades, because someone I know has also got a copy of these, or at least most of what I ordered, she also got a similar amount, but she actually didn't opt for the 3D terrain, and she says that it's very, very poorly designed in that regard if you don't have them. Apparently they're on really, really hard to see backgrounds and the colouring and lighting on them is very, very difficult to see. That remains to be seen for myself. I'm going to find out once I actually open these up. But in the meantime, we'll add our final little last part on because believe it or not, 
all of this isn't even everything. Last up, we have an extra little dice set. Just to be safe, you never know when you might lose something. They're obviously specific dice, not just one to six. So naturally, I always wanted a spare just in case. So that's our kind of undead horde sized unboxing for all of this. Now we're going to actually unbox it and look through everything here, but this is the contents. This is what we're looking forward to. This is what we're gonna have here. But having said all that, let's move on to the actual unboxing. Now that we cleared off some space, we can move on to the actual unboxing. We'll check out every single package there. We'll look at all the detail and everything that's incorporated inside them. We'll talk a little bit about it. We'll see what's a nice surprise. But before we go any further, I know what you're thinking. Q, what you do is so high quality, you can't just leave it like this. You know what's missing. And you're right, I absolutely know what's missing. So we should absolutely get the proper, appropriate ambiance going. Let's do this. Now, and naturally, because this is a properly legit unboxing, we are going to start with the core board game. Naturally, you can't do anything else without this one. It's still fully sealed because, well, we're going legit. And let's see what we have. We'll get this off, check out what we have to work with. So, with the actual board game itself, the core board game, naturally, the front of the box, I will... I won't even say it's a, a a gripe or a discrepancy. It's just that this uses the North American box art. This isn't Resident Evil to me, funny enough. This is not the cover of Resident Evil 2 to me. The cover to Resident Evil 2, for those of you who live here in Europe, looks more like this. This is the front of our Resident Evil 2. Not this. Not that it matters, it's not a gripe or anything. It's just an extra little bit of info. So, let's see what else we got. Side of the box, not much. Other side of the box, just your product code and whatnot, all the good stuff. On the back, now this is, this is what we really want. Let's, let's properly go in here. I'm gonna have to move this back just a little bit. There we go, so this is what we really want. You can see everything incorporated here. So many tiles, so many sculpts, tokens, cards, everything. Let's take a quick look at the back. I'm going to just read this off just to, to make sense. Night has fallen over Raccoon City, and a shroud of darkness hides the horrors within. A viral outbreak has brought this once prosperous town to its knees, infecting the populace and turning them into ravenous undead monsters. It is into this nightmare that you are now thrown, another survivor desperately trying to escape with your life. Along the way you have to aid others like you, battle enemies unknown, and search for the sinister truth behind this disaster that has befallen Raccoon City. So in this game box, we contain 24 highly detailed plastic miniatures, 26 double-sided game board tiles, 44 terrain elements, 155 cards, 4 player health track boards, 11 tracker dials, 6 dice, 40 tokens, 1 rule book, and 1 scenario book. And you also get a nice little picture of some of the sculpts, which are these ones down here. And now that we've got that taken care of, we can actually get on to seeing what everyone really wants, to do what we came here to do to unbox our glorious Resident Evil 2 core board game and everything to go along with it. So, let's open this bad boy up and see what we have inside. Oh, something's dropping. We have... <laughs> Everyone who is familiar with Resident Evil 2 knows exactly what this is. The splash screen at the start saying this game contains scenes of explicit violence and gore. We all know it, we all love it. Oh, it's double-sided, same one. Okay, we'll move that off to the side just for the moment. Just so we can free up a little bit of space, because there's a lot of stuff in this, but a, but a feel of it and the weight of it. So we got our rule book, our core rule book. There's not much really to say about this without reading the entire thing first. I actually have a, I have a PDF version of this. They distributed it a little while back so everyone could get, get familiar with it in advance in case you wanted to play it straight off the bat. And there's a quick reference sheet for activations and stuff on the back. We'll worry about the rule book later, of course. Not now, I mean, not in this video, but I should say I'll worry about it. And we've got the scenario book. This one, of course, is gonna be the actual story and how everything is set up, how everything is played, the design, why and where everything is. Now, here we go. 
we're gonna have a lot, I mean a lot of stuff here. So first up, we'll to, oh, the majority of the box is actually something else. So we have our tiles. These are our gameplay tiles. Very, wait, they can't be our gameplay tiles, can we? No, these are our tokens and all that. Okay, this, that's, that makes more sense. These are all our different tokens. Doors, typewriters, all this stuff. Now, I don't know how easy it is to see on the camera. I'm looking through the viewfinder and, the, and whatnot, but it's kind of difficult to make out some of them. Some of them just kind of show certain passageways. Some of them show grates and vents and stuff. Again, I'm trying to hold it at an angle so it catches the light. It's, mu it's actually much easier to see in person than it is, or the other way around, it's actually much easier to see on camera than it is in person and make out whatever it actually is. So, we'll, once we start getting a bit further through it, looking through some of the other boxes, seeing what other tiles and all are available, we'll be able to find out if, uh, if my friend's version or her, we call it depiction or description of the tiles and whatnot is accurate. I mean, I'm still trying to not catch too much glare off them. But I mean, they can be made out. But again, how is that gonna, how is that gonna vary? I mean, like, directly under the light. How is that gonna vary in a room where the light could be somewhere else and you're just sitting there with several people around the table? It remains to be seen. It remains to be seen. This is only new for me, so I haven't got a chance to play it or test it out with anyone. And trying to get a group of friends for all this together is gonna be a bit of a nightmare. But hey, at least we can all escape that nightmare. Resident Evil 2 style. Okay, these all actually seem to be the same tiles, or the majority of the same tiles. This one's a little bit different. This one has some tokens as well as tiles and stuff on it. So we got a, an umbre a bloody umbrella token of some sort, a counter or dial, some extra little bit of individual ones. These might be the ones that she was talking about, the individual little ones. I'm just gonna look through some of them here just to make sense of them on the, I'll just look at them kind of close and off camera. I mean, these are typewriters. So I can see that here, these are typewriters. These ones are, this one's a door, I believe. Yeah, this is a door. I'm looking through some of the other ones, like these ones here, and they're very hard to make out. I realize it's so hard because of the, the glare. It's much easier to see them through the actual LCD on the camera than it is in person. I mean, it's, they still look like doors to an extent. And some of these, these ones here, they're almost impossible to see in, in like my actual light. I'm just gonna take them off camera one sec to get a better view. Yeah, it's, it's nearly impossible to make these out. And I'm holding them at like every angle possible to, to try to catch the light. And they're very, very difficult. So yeah, she was uh, she was right in saying that in in some of the some of the situations, some of the other ones like the the typewriters and some of the the doors and I'm going to assume these are more doors. Maybe that's a failing that maybe that's evidence that they are fairly poor that I can't make out if they're actually doors or not. But anyway, we'll see how that one goes. It's it's something. It's something. It seems like a, a very heavy oversight, especially for a company like Steamforge Games, who have so much proper experience with this that you would think they would know to, say, use proper fonts and proper whatever. So next up we got a, another, another board. This one is all tokens and rather than tiles and whatnot. We've got Echoes in the Darkness, Persisting Unease, Pre what's that? Prehensile Grasp and Rising Fear. Obviously that's going to be explained to us what they actually are in the, the rule book. We've got all different ammo counters, all sorts of, again, trackers for possibly ammo or whatnot, some other stuff. Possibly damage, maybe damage markers or something to that effect. More doors, some probable health tokens. Something fell. What was this? Little something. Okay, I only see one thing that fell out, so I'm going to assume it's from the center of here. Nothing else seems to have actually fallen out. Some other tokens and whatnot, ink ribbons. I uh, still can't actually make out what these ones are. I'm going to bring them up close to myself. 
very difficult to make out what they actually are which again is a bit of a failing but I'm sure it's explained in the the actual rules and whatnot and we got some health trackers we all know and love the the glorious Resident Evil health tracker this one more of the same it's exactly the same stuff we had on the previous one same with all the, the four there's one minor difference that I can see if you look just here and on this one it's the, the side pack it allows you to carry two more items or something by the looks of it so that is not all of our main board just yet I'm just going to move these boards put them in there but let's take out uh, you know I'll show this off before we go into it let's take a quick look it's very hard with my terrible lighting I do promise to buy some studio lights at some point this year. We got some scopes. So let's open this bad boy up and we'll see. There's nothing else underneath it. The box underneath there is empty. So a lot of the weight was in these the tiles as you'd expect. Now this is stuck to the side to keep everything in. Let's just get this tape off. Okay, that's everything, that's what we want. So, let's see, we're getting a little bit closer now that everything is off. We have, the, it's actually probably better if I just take them out and look at them individually. I'm not gonna hold every single one of them up because there's so many of them. But you can see if, hopefully if my camera is focusing properly, it's very hard to tell. But you can see the detail in the sculpt is actually very impressive. I'm trying to look at it myself and then look at it back on the viewfinder. <laughs> but it's actually very impressive. They feel good. I know my friend that I mentioned that she's actually going to do a lot of them. She's going to paint them herself. The red ones, of course, she's going to prime to make them either grey or white. And then she's just going to go from there with herself. But I mean, let's, let's take a look at what else we got here. We have this one is wow. This one is well stuck in. There we go. This one is one of the one of the bosses. Your our good old Weevil boss when he kind of grows up. We got some liquors. We got Claire and what looks like Ada. I just want to make sure these go back in securely. We got ourselves a Claire and we got ourselves an Ada. We got ourselves a Leon. We got ourselves what looks like Robert Kendall. Big dude with a shotgun. Looks like it could be him. Obviously some Leon there. We got some different zombies. Different zombies with different poses. We got some female zombies. We got some Cerberus dogs in all different poses. Standing. What, what's the other one? Okay. Patrolling. We've got attacking. But we've got ourselves. Well, these are actually much smaller than I expect. Oh, then again, we have full-size cards. So these ones are obviously just some sort of tokens rather than anything else. We'll open them up, have a quick look. Because we're safe here and we always cut away from ourselves. So let's take it, we got a equip, handgun, 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 knife, handgun, okay these seem to just be item stuff that yeah we got keys, more keys, first aid sprays, red shield, yeah these are these just seem to be items, items that you can place in the world and pick up and some use as consumables or some being key items for the actual story progress and whatnot, which is pretty nice. These ones are probably going to be more, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say more comprehensive, but more complex is probably the word. Apparently I can't even open it, there we go. Yeah, okay, I got a bin here beside me. I knew there would be a lot of plastic. So we got Leon S. Kennedy, Robert Kendo, Zombie, 
all clear. These are all like status cards by the looks of it. Let's just cut the deck a bit. We got Murder of Crows. Crimson Thirst, Liquor. So these are basically stat cards. You've got like all sorts of, of enemy stats between their health and their, I don't know, resilience or whatever they have, extra effects, things like that. These are all your, your primary cards, and whereas these seem like they'd be your inventory cards. So okay, that makes sense. I'm not gonna go through the whole deck, there's a shitload of cards there. A lot of doubles, duplicates, whatever. On top of that we have, what are these? Oh, they're all little counters and whatnot, so beat them for whatever use. They're either counters or you can use them to stick things in a certain place. Again, I'm not sure exactly how this one works, so I'm not sure what way they've designed it. Now we have our six dice. Three different types. One black one with, there's like umbrella logos and stuff on them. We've got some other ones too. I don't remember the name of these dice because they are listed in there in the what we call the Kickstarter updates and whatnot, but I just don't remember them off the top of my head. So, there we have our core board game. Damn, this is going to be one long video. Let's move on to, well, we'll keep it a secret and we'll just move straight on to something else. So next up we got our B-Files expansion, as we're going to do next. We all know if this is anything to go by based on Resident Evil 2, the B-Files expansion will be like a second story of some sort. Maybe it'll be another story of another group of survivors or something going on at the same time in parallel. We'll see how it goes. As you expect, with the sides and sides in front of the box there's not much. We've got our boy, we all know who that is, and we all know well, we won't spoil it, just to, just in case you're not in the know. But that's... Wow. Good job. Good job. But you know, I'm not going to edit that because we're, we're... We're professionals here. I do these I do these things raw, you know? That's, that's how I roll. I'm like ODB. I like it raw. So we got ourselves plenty of sculpts on here. We have ourselves... Now, this... See... I'm going to cause shenanigans here on some sort. There's so many inconsistencies when it comes to Resident Evil 2, and one of these really, really annoys me. You have this guy here, and this is all official from Capcom, using their own source material and using all their assistance and everything, and we have T-00 Tyrant. Okay, fair enough. In the game, you can see in Resident Evil 2, when he's first dropped in his cinematic, it, I believe, off the top of my head, it says Tyrant 103 which we see here, which is obviously his, I won't call it upgraded final form, but we know that throughout the course of the game and actions and happenstance and whatnot, he ends up becoming this. But you've got the weird Americans out there who refer to him as Mr. X for some reason, I don't know why, but if I remember correctly, he's referred to this version as T-103 straight away off the bat. Haven't played Resident Evil 2 in about a year or so, I would have to double check that, but I've always known him as Tyrant 103, the whole time, everything. I only found out about Mr. X like a year or two ago because of weird American stuff. Anyway, it's a bit of a major gripe, but we'll see how it goes. We got ourselves some extra, extra zombies and all for the, the B-Files, we got some two enhanced liquors, and we got, what's that, 81, is that 80? 61 extra cards on there too. We read the entire thing, obviously. These new ones are going to be specific for the B-Files, but hey, it is what it is. So let's see what this says anyway. You may have escaped the nightmare once, but the characters who fled the underground laboratory weren't the only survivors of the Raccoon City incident. At the same time and the same place, parted by unescapable destiny, a second group of survivors also battled their way through the monster-infested streets, sinister RPD hallways, and forsaken sewer depths, struggling to escape their fate. This is their story. And this package contains 12 highly detailed plastic miniatures, 7 double-sided game board tiles, I should actually probably put this in, a, in frame, that would be easier, wouldn't it? 14 terrain elements, 61 cards, 3 tokens, and 1 expansion booklet. So, it's basically what we know as Claire B and Leon B, just in a different way, shape, and form. Now, let's... Ooh, that's the wrong way. 
let's open this bad boy up. We'll see what's in here. There's obviously not as much included as the core game, but that's kind of to be expected as an alternate, alternate story, alternate timeline, alternate gameplay. The core stuff is where we're really at. So let's pop this bad boy open. We got our B files one. Will we have another warning of explicit violence and gore? Probably not. I imagine that's probably reserved for the main game. Yeah, no, uh, no version of it here. So, what do we have? We obviously have our B files expansion rule booklet, set up the layout and everything we need to know for it, especially considering the fact there's new enemies, new bosses, new scenario, new players, new everything. We don't need to go through that in full detail. Let's see what else we got. We got. One, oh, we only got like one and a half here. This one is much smaller. Maybe it works in conjunction with the main game, or maybe you just need the small ones is all. We got our usual little one. They're all more rinse and repeat of the same stuff we have, I believe. Looks like they are. We'll get them in there. This one is a little bit different, a little bit new. Not 100% sure what we have here. It's kind of difficult to make out as some sort of fire. Not, again, not 100%. We'll take a look at the, the tokens, see what these ones say. Marked target, probably something to do with the, the new mechanics and whatnot. And we have a lot of almost indistinguishable, again, tokens. Let me just take it off camera real quick, hold it at a different angle, see what I can do. One of which is a rocket launcher. This one here is a rocket launcher. I have no idea what these are. In my current light, in my current setup here, they're actually completely unintelligible. Okay, we got another one. These are all our extra sculpts and whatnot. We got some cards. We'll get our little plastic layer off so we can get a better look at them. Again, I'm not going to hold up every single one of them because that would take way, way too long. But we'll look at all the more important ones and the cool looking ones. Stuff like hesitate to call it Tyrant Z T00, Tyrant 103, Mr. X, whatever the fuck you want to know him as. This one is stuck differently. So what do we got? Let's get in close for a proper look. Mostly, these top ones, the top two rows, as well as the left and middle of the third row, are just different zombie sculpts. After that, we have our boy. Hopefully, he's detailed on camera. Your everything that's not Mr. X, we'll call him. Because I refuse to call him Mr. X, that's so fucking stupid. It's like a villain from, I don't know, Inspector Gadget. Him and the Claw. We've got our... I won't call him Final Form, but... We've got one of our end variants of... T-103. I'll just take out one of the liquors. One of our two enhanced liquors. With Fancy Tone and Super Claw. Don't worry guys, I do promise to eventually get a proper unboxing set up with proper lights and proper everything, essentially. I will do it eventually. He's been saying for ages. So, what have we got in our new item, inventory, card slots, whatever they are? Let's get these open. And we'll just have a brief leaf through. That was inadvertent rhyming. Got some explosives, shotguns, acid rounds, custom shotgun, different rounds, bandages, custom magnum parts, valve hand. So again, it's just stuff needed for the story. Some good stuff, everything we'd all recognize as Resident Evil 2 fans. You actually don't want to go back in. What the hell? Oh, 
Oh, there's a little lip. Okay, I didn't see that for a second. There's a little lip on the top. I don't think there was a lip on the main one, which was kind of strange. But anyway, let's see what we got for our main status cards for the B-Files. So we got our T00 Tyrant, our T103 separate Tyrant variant, different attacks like overhead smash, knockdown, obviously these are all maybe things on how you dodge them, mark for dead, shoulder charge, wild swipe, all clear, mounting trepidation, creak, grizzly reanimation, okay so there's a lot of stuff, it's all the different stuff that we're going to need for story and whatnot in here. There's a lip on this one too. Really? Really game? You wanna do me like this? There we go, that's better. So, I'll box all this back up and we'll move on to whatever's next with our Resident Evil 2 board game unboxing. So next up we'll go with the survival horror expansion, we'll see how this one plays out. Seems to be based on, well I shouldn't even say based on because it's only got Brad on the front, but how does he really play into it? We know how Brad plays into Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3, as well as 1 I guess, but we'll see how it factors in with this. One thing I'll note as well is I noticed that the first couple of parts of this have been pretty long, the first unboxings and all that. I noticed the, they're all expansion based ones, well expansion and the core game. I think once we get through the actual full-on expansion ones, they're going to be considerably quicker. Anyway, let's move on. We have more Brad, nothing as usual, and we got our, our back of here. So let's take a quick look at what we got in our survival horror expansion. So the big thing on here is we got more cards, we got more characters, including Annette Birkin, Sherry Birkin, Ben Ber uh, Bertolucci, I always kind of butcher his name, William Birkin, Brian Irons, Brad Vickers, and Marvin Branagh, Brana? Marvin Bran, I don't know, it's, it's a very weird spelling of a name. Two giant spiders, two ivies, zombie Brad Vickers, and zombie Marvin. So we all know how that plays out. So let's see the description on this bad boy. Not all the survivors of the Raccoon City incident were concerned with escaping the nightmare. For some, those of dark hearts and even more deranged minds, the only response was to prowl the abandoned hallways and tunnels in search of prey. But the survivors should not despair, for new allies can also be found, and with them, new weapons to confront the challenges. Includes 13 highly detailed plastic miniatures, 38 cards, and one expansion booklet. So it's pretty small in comparison to say some of the rest of the expansion stuff we have. But, that's beside the point. It's an addition, it's more of the quality stuff we know and love. So let's dig right into it. In our survival horror expansion. We really only have one proper expansion to go after this, which is the Fort Survivor expansion. There is also the retro pack, but I do think that would be considerably quicker and smaller. The rest of which are just individual little packs. So we got our survival horror expansion, rules booklet. Obviously this is gonna double up as the survival guide based on everything we need to know. Layout, characters, items, enemies, etc. You know what, we'll just, we'll skip this part until I take off the, the plastic cover because it's just gonna create a massive glare. They seem to all be stuck in random places. So let's get a look at our new characters and our new enemies. Starting up the top, we have our boy. I want to get nice and close without, see I can take some of them out. I want to take, let's see, we've got, I'll take out some of the better looking ones. Hmm, what counts as better looking ones? I guess, 
Annette Birkin actually looks as one of the better ones. Focus. Come on, camera. Come on. Okay, doesn't want to do it. Let's get slowly, slowly, slowly. Hopefully that looks good. We'll see what else we have in here. We got some zombies. The, the spiders are kind of a little bit disappointing. So we'll just worry about, say, the likes of the ivy and whatnot. They're not nothing crazy that we need to actually take out on here. We got more cards. These aren't our inventory cards, these are our status cards. Obviously there's a lot less in this one, so there's a lot less cards. I'd say based on who's here included in this package, we're most likely looking at some poisonous stuff based on attacks from ivy and spiders. But let's take a quick look. We got giant spider stack cards, we got ivy, we got poison ivy, zombie Brad Vickers, zombie Marvin, advanced Leon S. Kennedy, advanced Claire Marvin, Okay, we got some character cards. Let's see what we got as some stats. Venomous Spray, that's one of the attacks that we expected from both character, both enemies. Doesn't seem to be too many included in there, too much. On the super weird side, only a, ha only a very, very small amount of cards on this one, in this expansion's inventory. Maybe a handful of weapons, a couple of story items. We got a G virus sample, Sherry's photo, flamethrower, unicorn medal, spark shot, Gatling gun, ooh, the Gatling gun, eagle medal, cold single action army, revolver ocelot, anyone, and bestial rage. So, not much in uh, that front. I'm sure it's all explained within the actual rule set themselves, and then it will all make a lot more sense. But in the meantime, that's been what we have, our survival horror expansion. We move on next, we'll open up and check out, well I can see it over there, but I'm not going to say what it is just yet. You know me, the master of survival horror, the master of suspense, I like to keep everything nice and tense. Up next we have another expansion pack, we have the Ford Survivor expansion. We all know who this is, the Ford Survivor himself. I'm not going to go into super detail if by some magical reason you're watching this and have never played the absolutely amazing game that is Resident Evil 2, especially with the upcoming remake later this month, because, no wait, is it this month or next month? It's this month. Yeah, it is, it's this month, it's this month. Okay, we're good. Not much on the sides, much smaller box than any of the previous expansions of the core game. So let's go straight into the back of it. We have the Fort Survivor. Now, this could act, of, act as a temporary little spoiler warning, I guess, but I mean, you knew that coming in here. Alpha team here, mission accomplished. Rendezvous at meeting point. So there's very, very little on here, which is why you can see it's it's all on there. The only thing this one includes is two highly detailed plastic miniatures. Let me get that in frame. Six double-sided game board tiles, even though it doesn't feel like it. Two player health track boards, 10 cards, 13 tokens, and one expansion booklet. So, let's get going, straight into it anyway. It's a nice quick one, it's a nice small box. We don't have much to say, we don't have much to do until we actually get into it. This one, this one actually opens in a different way. When you compare it to the three previous ones, the bigger ones, where they actually opened as and they slid off, this one seems to have a tab for somewhere to open it up. At the top here, you can see it's got a tab. Kind of dislike boxes like that, especially when they're made of cardboard or some sort of material to that effect, because it's very easy to bend and break especially to a point where it can never get back to its original shape. So we've got our Fort Survivor expansion rules booklet, obviously it's the scenario guide as well. We don't need to go super in detail in there because, well, spoilers galore. We have more of our tiles, this looks to be a rinse and repeat of what we had before. Same style ones from the core game and one of the other expansions. I 
just brute forced the, the tape that time. Go me. A certain dominance over plastic. We got some extra ones. We got uh, individual health kits and or health trackers and all for individual characters. You can tell who is who rather than just being generic. We have a lot of what are these? I think they're like TNT or dynamite or something. It's very, very hard to tell. And I can't even make out what this one is. I'm just gonna try to have a better look somewhere. I, I think it's a grate or like a, a, a vent or something like that. It's very, very poor, uh, poorly illustrated. I'm very, very surprised Steamforge Games would, would let something like that happen. Since we only have two models and two miniatures in this one, I'll get both of them out. We have our little boy. I'm sure if you're already a Resident Evil 2 fan, you know who this is. If not, if you don't know and you're not a Resident Evil 2 fan, I'd say hang on for, I don't know, probably about a month, and then you'll see if he is included in the new version of Remake. I'm sure he'll be all over YouTube and Twitch. And Mixer, of course. And stream me for you know who you are. And of course, we've got our other proper Fort Survivor. We have Name Redacted. Almost said it there. That's why there was a little bit of a pause in between. Oh well. <laughs> that's a. Uh, that's quite the quite the pack. This one is actually going to be very difficult to open because it's going to be very hard to get a start point. I spoke too soon. This one actually had a like a small tab, which made it a little bit easier these bad boys out. They're just the two character cards, that's it. There's no extra stats, no extra anything. I wonder if their expansion in this game is similar to their scenario in actual Resident Evil 2. Again, I'm sure all that's explained in the rule book we had there. But we we took a, a little bit of a detour for the purposes of this video. Inventory cards Bombs, 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 bombs. Better look next time, and better look next time, and better look next time, and better look next time. Self-explanatory. Pretty quick. So that is the Fort Survivor expansion. Now, that's all, from what I can see, that's all our main major expansions taken care of. There is one other actual thing listed as an expansion. But from what I remember on its details from the Kickstarter backer or the Kickstarter pages and descriptions and whatnot, it's going to be very quick. It's not a. Oh, that noise is horrible. It's not going to be something super crazy and whatnot. Probably be very similar to what we just unboxed here. Anyway, let's go and take a quick look at what's coming next the proper final expansion rather than the little miniature. We call them individual character packs. So let's go. And so next up we have our Resident Evil 2 Retro Pack Expansion. And this is the, the one, the big deal that many people probably ordered for obvious reasons. When you look at all the cards and all and whatnot we had in the previous expansions and the previous core game, they didn't look like Resident Evil 2 to an extent. They didn't look like the menu, some of them didn't look like the icons, some of them didn't look like the items, but that's where the retro pack comes in. Because while we have nothing on the sides, as you can see, I noticed that when I was picking it up, on the back of the retro pack, we have, oh, that is a horribly packed one. You know what, I'm just going to open it real quick because since it's one of the slim boxes, the wrapping on it kind of wrinkled and it really really catches the light blinding everybody so you can see yeah much much better these ones they look like the Resident Evil 2 menu that you know and love now from what I understand this is all exactly the same as what's already included in the core game and all that stuff they're just skin swaps palette swaps as far as I know, there's no new different rules or anything, but we'll take a quick look. 
But one thing I especially love about this is you can see all the description here. Because it's the retro pack, it's actually exactly the intro from Resident Evil 2. A bizarre incident occurred on the outskirts of an American suburb called Raccoon City. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T-Virus, a mutagenic toxin created by the International Enterprise Umbrella Incorporated for use in bioweapon experiments. The Raccoon City Police Department Special Stars Unit immediately began the investigation of the affair. The case was apparently closed. But the Umbrella Corporation's experiments were far from finished. So the retro pack is for the old school Resident Evil fans out there, recreating each of the cards from Resident Evil 2, the board game and its expansions to match the style of the classic video game release. It also includes a series of additional iconic tiles to customise your play experience. So it does actually come with a little bit of new stuff as well as all the, the originals. If you're a series veteran who played the game the first time around and want to indulge your nostalgia for the good old days, this expansion is definitely for you. This box contains six double-sided game board tiles, 323 cards, and one expansion booklet. So as expected, it's really just palette swaps. It did seem to have one or two extras though included, which we'll get a proper look at. So we have a retro pack rules booklet, item cards, tension deck cards, enemy reference cards, character profile cards, trap deck cards, you would just activate them a trap card, locked door cards, boss reference cards, boss behavior cards, tiles, and the new layout and whatnot if you want to play the retro scenario. I just, I looked through that one a little bit quicker because it had something that I, uh, I wasn't really expecting. So it says some new custom tiles to this effect. Some of them do seem, this one here seems new, and if I can get the shine off it. This one here seems new, as does this one. Other than that, everything seems to be the same. This might be new. It's very hard to tell. I've just kind of, oh yeah, some of these are definitely new. Some of these are absolutely definitely new. I just kind of, between glossing over the original ones for the purposes of the video, Let's go into the world of survival horror, as illustrated by Steamforge Games and a Retro Pack. Retro Pack Expansion, I believe it was called. I want to do this without ripping it. I should have done it properly the first time. I thought I could finesse it, but. Apparently not. So let's see. Right, we're gonna we're gonna skip some of these. We're gonna get to some of the stuff we know and love. Let me get at a better angle. I'm gonna break my wrist doing that. And we can see just what they're what they're like. If I can ever stop getting the the actual reflections off them. I guess it's the item cards that we're really looking for. Naturally, we want to see the ones that are just the uh, the regular old school style. We got, we got the old school menus that we want. We leave them to last, just because. So many cards. Hopefully this one doesn't completely finesse up on me. No, I managed to get through it this time. So on this one, this one seems to have dub. Oh no, on the back it tells you who they're for. Okay, I got it. So these are like character cards, attack cards. Well, these more so seem to be enemy cards with attacks and whatnot too. Yeah, so that's the standard stuff that we've seen before. Not the, the nostalgic joy we're, we're looking for. But you know me, I save the best for last. I don't blow my load straight away at the start, we save it. We pace ourselves and we get good. So on this one we got more, I think this is what they call the tension deck. Undead ammo. Yeah, these are all just like situational cars. Like you'd be walking along and suddenly bang, enemies attack or whatever. Or you hear something in the distance and it has some sort of effect on your gameplay. Maybe requires you to roll a higher number or have a stat penalty or something. But these are the ones we want. These are our old school 
inventory cards. So you can see them, they are very, very similar to what you'd expect from Resident Evil 2 and it's in-game menus. Absolutely glorious. It was definitely worth the extra money. Nice throwback, you know me, I'm all about nostalgia. I mean, hell, come on, it's in the name. Retro Q, come on. You know that. Doesn't even need to be said. The big challenge for this is to be able to test it out. Well, first off, we do have a shitload more items. We have all the ex items for all the expansions and all their stories and whatnot. Valve Handle, that's kind of legendary and meme worthy at this point. But it's going to be tough to get everyone together to actually properly play this and test it out, which is a shame. The group I play stuff like this with and the group I finally whenever we do get around to playing a bit, like local stuff, beat them local computer games or stuff like this. We only get together maybe two or three times a year, which is unfortunate. But hey, we're real life adults, you know. Some people have jobs, some people have kids, some people have other responsibilities and hobbies. For some reason, I'm not number one on their hobby list and responsibilities. These people are obviously wrong and have poor choices. But anyway, let's move on to our next one after our retro pack expansion. So our last remaining packs to open, we do still have a few of them left. In fact, off the top of my head, I believe there's seven and a bit if you include the dice. But from what I... I'm led to believe, based on the look of the boxes and whatnot and the size of them, they'll be pretty quick and they'll be, there won't be too much in them. So, last, first up I should say, I was going to say last up, next up we have the Survivor Pledge Kickstarter Exclusive Alternate Sculpts. The box is empty on all sides, so there doesn't seem to be much in this regard. From what I understand at least anyway, the way it was explained on Kickstarter and one of the FAQs, I refuse to call them facts, I hate. I mean, sometimes we say game facts as, you know, easier way of saying it. But from what was explained in one of the FAQs, was that these characters are literally just alternate sculpts. They don't seem to have any new rules or any new abilities or any new anything. They're just alternate looks for existing characters. So let's see what we got in here. We do have a decent amount of them. Now these were all thanks to anyone who, anyone who subscribed to the Kickstarter or participated in the Kickstarter. When all the stretch goals were made and hit and whatnot, this was what you got. I don't knock alternate sculpts and everything. So it's pretty decent. So let's see what we got. We got a shotgun wielding badass Leon. We got, is that Claire or Ada? I want to say it's clear because it's got the bow gun, but it with the dress it looks kind of like Ada. It could be one of her alternate outfits. It's very hard to tell. I'd have to go back and check the Kickstarter page. It details them all completely on there. We've got a wounded Leon. We have, I'm not even sure what this one is. I think it's more, I think it's alternate costume Leon. We've got what looks like Kendo. The rest seem to be, there's like a skeletal zombie. We've got Claire with grenade launcher, flaming zombies, cop zombies, more cop zombies, more regular zombies, all different types of zombies. We've got single action, ar single action army, Claire, which we will take a look at when she's channeling her inner revolver ocelot. Camera, please cooperate with me. We all know what her special outfit looks like, her little cowgirl outfit, and we got crawling zombies. As we all know, in Resident Evil 2, you could not only blow off a zombie's head, but you could blow a zombie in half and it'd still crawl at you. 
a nice improvement made over Resident Evil 1. When you think about it, in Resident Evil 1, if you shot a zombie at point blank range with a shotgun, you didn't even need to aim up, you could just aim regular, and it would blow their head off. However, in Resident Evil 2, that was changed. You could shoot them at point blank range with a shotgun in the torso, and it would sever their torso from their legs. Their legs would stumble and wander around a little bit before eventually falling over. Of course, the torso would still keep crawling at you. You could aim up with the shotgun, blast the zombie's head off, or you could aim down, blast the zombie's legs off, and then they just start crawling at you. So moving on, next up we have the Murder From Above pack. Now, same as before, there's probably only, only going to be a couple of sculpts in here. I'm not expecting... Actually, there might be a rule book because from what I know is in this pack, remember I ordered these so I do know what's in, in these, there is new enemies and new enemy types in here. Maybe the cards are included elsewhere, or maybe they're actually included in here. It just seems like they might not be because of the nature of this. Okay, we do have a little bit more. We have our Murder From Above contents. Naturally, since there's considerably smaller amount of stuff, it makes sense that they don't need to go overboard for it. So with the contents of Murder From Above, we have enemies, one giant moth, and we have four sets of crows, tension deck cards, enemy reference cards, these are all credits, and, well, the expansion rules booklet. Obviously there's only two new enemies in there, so there's not really any crazy amount of stuff to do. We'll open up the cards first before we have a quick look at the sculpts. Again, only, here we go, only two different types of sculpts in there, so we can take both of them out. And have a look. I know there's, I realize there's four of one of them, but they're all the same, so we only need to look at one. On this one, we've got our crows, a giant moth, and murder of crows. That's some sort of tension deck version, as well as the character cards. So let's get these back in. Really, you think it would be easier with only three cards? So let's go, we'll get our little crows out. We have our murder of crows. I love that word, murder of crows, it's so good. Like you have a group, you have like a school of fish, you have a gang of kids, and you've got a murder of crows. Dual meaning, one of those words with a dual meaning. And we got a giant moth, which I'm surprised didn't have a, an extra card for like a poisonous attack or something. Maybe it's included with it. We didn't fully look at the details of, of each individual card, even though there was only three of them. But hey, it's not like it matters. So, we're, we're getting through these last ones, these small ones, pretty quickly, as expected. I knew, I had a new to an extent, had an effect, uh, an idea, what was in them. So yeah. Now, this bad boy. We have a giant alligator expansion. Resident Evil 2 wouldn't be Resident Evil 2 to some people without the giant alligator. In fact, there was even, we could call it a little bit of controversy with the upcoming Resident Evil 2 remake. Because the devs were finding it hard to justify putting the giant alligator into the remake. They thought it might be a bit too ludicrous and a bit too out there and a bit too crazy. I think the fact that they even thought that was ludicrous and crazy. Now, having opened some of these boxes earlier on in this video, we know how this works. So, when I saw that this was just for the giant alligator, I thought it was going to be absolutely massive. Like, almost the size of the box. Oh, there, there's such a tease, it's hidden under there, so I can't even see it yet. We got the giant alligator expansion, the rules and whatnot. I'm not going to open this one yet, because it might spoil how big it actually is. But it's obviously got the rules and attacks and everything about it. So, we have... Our usual little one. I'm standing back here because, I mean, it'll it'll let it out and I don't want to see it just yet. I'm still standing behind the camera so I can't see it. it looks like more of the same. One or two, of the, this might be new. I don't recognize the, the green computer and whatnot, but anyway, let's go. Let's have a look. He's bigger. He's smaller than initially expected, but he's bigger than my adjusted expectations. That's what she said. Let's 
gonna be fun editing this whole video together. I wonder how I'm gonna do it. What's gonna have to be changed. We've actually got more if these would come out. Are you serious? I don't want to rip these. Or there we go. I didn't want to rip them or anything, so I'm always... I mean, when you have stuff like this, you can always just pull it out full force. But I'm always very conscious about the, the, the amount of force I use to do it. Because I don't want to rip or break or bend anything to warp it to an extent. So we got our giant alligators, all his attacks. Wall smash. Yeah, these are all... Yeah, these are all our appropriate cards for our boy, the giant alligator, who obviously I am teasing and leaving to last. I realize you can probably see a little bit of him there, but... Let's be the point. There's not much here. We got a handful of cards. We, we have literally four cards. One of them is double-sided. But there's not much. Now, the piece de resistance of this particular expansion and this particular pack. We have our boy, the giant croc. You can see he's actually pretty decent. Like, lining him up, he's about the length of my hand. Which is pretty good, pretty impressive. Especially when you consider all the other ones are fairly small. Not a criticism, mind you. But this one just seems exceptionally large. Like I know usually when you think of, say, miniature based games, personally, I think of Warhammer 40k. That's something I grew up playing as a, as a child, as a teenager, eventually fell out of it, but trying to get back into it. But the big point I'm trying to make is those miniatures were bigger. Now when you look at other games like this, more so board game style ones, usually the miniatures are roughly this size. Whoops. Give or take, of course. Now, when I say this size, I don't mean the size of the alligator. But they're usually of rough equivalent size to the other models we have. Like, I play Dungeons and Dragons, and I know how some of the miniatures in that can be bigger and higher quality, but I also have the board game version of Dungeons & Dragons, the very basic beginner set, because I wanted to kind of ease my friends into it. And those miniatures are very similar to what you have in these. Now, the last couple, we're almost there. So next up we've got our Malformations of G, and we've got our Malformations of G B Files expansion. We're gonna leave the B Files to the side for a second, and we're gonna open the main one. Oh, this one actually has a uh, has a back because it's got the proper style on it. So you can see there's actually two of, no, you know what? That's kind of, that was kind of wrinkled and reflecting the light kind of poorly. Which of course is something we don't want. So on here, where our malformations of G-Pack, we have two of them included with it. We've got our Birkin stage four, and our Birkin Stage 2. So I'm gonna have to pull this away from the camera because I need to read it close for myself because it's a very, very small font. William Birkin, the genius responsible f oh, you know what, I'm gonna pull this in front just so you can have a quick look. Just to make it fair. William Birkin, the genius responsible for the creation of the G-Virus, was once head researcher for the Umbrella Corporation until agents were sent to steal his research. Grievously injured and left for dead, Badum Tish, the brilliant scientist was forced to inject himself with his own virus in order to claim his revenge. He now roams the ruins of Raccoon City as a horrifically mutated monster, a near unstoppable adversary. Can you defeat William Birkin as you try to escape the nightmare? And this box game expansion includes two highly detailed plastic miniatures, one double sided game board tile, 19 cards, and one expansion booklet. So we'll leave this one aside for a second, and we'll go straight into our Malformations of G standard expansion. For use with the core game, probably balance to do with it and whatnot. So you have all our standard stuff. No point in going into anything there. A double-sided tile, it's obviously for boss encounters and whatnot. This one looks like the area where you fight like the dog variant of him. 
But anyway, let's go. I would call the dog variant, the four-legged variant. I actually have a bunch of Resident Evil 2 action figures from the US that I bought when I was, when was I over there first? Well, I think I was like 12 years old. The, the store I was in, they had three different sets of the Resident Evil 2 action figures. They were either $10 each, or you could buy the entire set of three packs for $10. So that was a bit of a no-brainer. Still have them. Still have them, mind you. Come, one of them is, let's see. One of them is Claire, one of them is Leon, one of them is a liquor. One of them, well, it was, if I remember correctly, it was Claire and the liquor, or Claire and the police zombie. Leon and the other enemy that I just mentioned. And the last one was one of the malformations of G and he's completely adjustable to do all with like different chest and different arms and whatnot, different poses. That's beside the point. Because we have our Magnum, Magnum rounds and grenade rounds. A couple of extra little cards we throw in there just to help us take down the malformations of G. We all know the Magnum and the Magnum rounds. Absolute beast mode. Get in here, we look at our cards. Broken stage two. I noticed that it has these as the the enemy cards rather than like the proper character cards, if you will. Double strike, these are all just their different attacks. Yeah, it's everything you'd expect. Now, the good part of this one. We have our Birkin stage two. No pipe included, but big ass claw and open eye. We got ourselves a Birkin Stage 4, which is the one I call the dog form. Pretty big one on this one, actually. Much bigger than I was expecting. Damn good stuff. On the plus side, though, I will take one positive away from the fact that it's going to be so difficult for me to play this with friends because of scheduling conflicts and whatnot. Because of all of that, it gives me time to memorize and master the rules. I wanted to make sure it wasn't upside down. One of the big important things for anyone who's running a game like this, be it Dungeons and Dragons, Resident Evil 2, Monopoly, even as something as basic as Monopoly, or just any type of, we call it board game, just tabletop game, that's a better way any type of tabletop game, it's always better for the person running it, or, I mean, it's decent if anyone involved, if any of the people can do it, but the person running it, it usually highly benefits that person to be able to know the rules, have them mastered, and just be able to rattle them off as quick as possible. Reference guides are also handy, and obviously I'm not saying that anyone running a game needs to know everything completely mastered 100%, but, it always helps. Quick reference guides are by no means a crutch, by no means a cheat, of course. So we have on our back here, of this one, we've got our Malformations of G B files. We have two different versions on here. Now, as always, I'm going to have to just read this off camera for a second because it is a tiny bit small. Although the first group of survivors were able to overcome the ferocious Birkin Stage 3 situation and escape, their adversary was not so easily defeated. Lurking within the darkness and regaining its strength, the creature was merely biding its time until a second group of survivors arrived before resuming its deadly assault. Can such a monstrous foe ever truly be defeated? It's time to step up and escape the nightmare once and for all. This board game expansion contains two highly detailed plastic miniatures, 17 cards, and one expansion booklet. Of course, those ones including Birkin Stage 1 and Birkin Stage 5. So, let's get straight into this one. I think it's funny that they mentioned the whole Birkin Stage 3 incident, but when you look at what was included in the other one, it was not Birkin Stage 3. So we've got our usual malformations of GB files. We'll skip that straight away. No tile included in this one, I noticed. Just cards and middle, I was gonna say middle, <laughs> miniatures. I was going to say models, and I was going to say miniatures, and the two of them blended together. This is 
is also very, very, I don't know if you can see it, hopefully you can't, but it's very interesting with how they've laid this one out. So let me just open this bad boy up real quick. These are obviously going to be our cards. I'm standing in my own shadow here. Birkin stage one, stage five, different attacks. Yeah, as you'd expect. They're just the attack cards and whatnot. We leave them in there. We have our different sculpts. We have Birkin stage one, just as I mentioned a minute ago, including the pipe. Crack some people upside the head with it. Some unfortunate survivors. And this, this bad boy. Now that is a malformation of G if I've ever seen one. That is our boy from the end of B chapter. Dragging himself towards us. I've seen enough anime to know where those tentacles are going. But we gotta be careful. We gotta take him down before anything like that can happen. Now, moving on. Our last two, or two and a half, will be extremely quick. So, thankfully, we're just about done. I do want to stress, as always, that I do plan on eventually having a proper setup to do unboxings. I know I've been saying that for a long time now, but it requires a lot of space and a, a proper setup and design. And lighting, lighting being a key one. Studio lights are coming, but that's for a different reason. We'll see what happens first. So our last two miniature expansions, and I literally mean that as miniature as in small, not miniature as in figures and miniatures, although they are technically those two, we have our 3D door set. Now the other one of course being our 3D terrain set, but these should be pretty quick and pretty painless to actually get through. I felt like I was jinxing myself when I said painless there, I was thinking okay if I do that I'm probably going to stab myself with this. Rather be safe than sorry. So let's see what we got. These ones are our 3D door upgrades to replace everything we had as those almost unintelligible little cards that we had. Are they all the same? They're not all the same. We do have multiple different doors. And they actually work. Look at that. Doors actually work. Fancy. I guess that's a whole thing for locked doors and unlocked doors and whatnot. But we've got like laboratory doors. We've got regular doors. We have more regular doors. Kind of like factory doors and whatnot. And that's actually it, that's all our doors. Did I have the one with the X on it? No, we have another style of factory door too. So that's it, nice cosmetic upgrades. Especially considering what we saw with some of the ones that we tried on the, what we call them, the tile versions. When we tried to look at them in the, the expansions. Some of them, highly questionable and very, very surprised at the design on that. As I mentioned before, Steamforge Steam Games are veteran of this kind of stuff. So how they had such an oversight is kind of shocking. Speaking of Steamforge Games and their, their pedigree, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine who was very into Dank Souls, like some people are, he actually showed me their, what, what did he call it, uh, their, we call it D&D &D clone of Dank Souls. And he was asking me all about it, he was asking me what I thought about it based on the, the small little bit of rules and whatnot they talked about, because as you know, I'm a D&D &D guy. And it actually seemed fairly solid, it fairly, seemed very, very comprehensive. And it seemed very, very quality. I think he pledged to it in the end, I actually should have, but I never did. I'm not sure if it ever released, 
Uh, it was done even before this Kickstarter, so I imagine it's probably out by now. Let's see, what else we got here anyway? We have what look like dead bodies. They look like dead. Oh, that. Remember those tiles that looked like something really weird and strange that I didn't know what they were and there was so many of them? They must actually be dead bodies of some sort because maybe they can rise up and become zombies if you're unlucky with a roll or something like that. In here, we've got what looks like our item boxes. We have our item storage crates, some classic Resident Evil nostalgia, and what's the word I'm looking for? Not signpost, but signature items. We've got our typewriters. Again, another Resident Evil staple. And we've got some ink ribbons. As, a, oh, as opposed to just little tiles for ink ribbons. So again, we'll leave that one because it's pretty small, not much to go by. I'm not even gonna open this last one just because it is just the extra dice set. We've already seen what they look like open. There's nothing else included. It's literally just a dice. We all know that it'll be explained and everything will be detailed and whatnot in the actual rules and the expansion pack rules. So there we have it, the absolute mess of an unboxing because goddamn, this was so long. It's gonna be a lot of fun to edit and it's certainly gonna be a lot of fun to play when master and memorize by the time I actually get a chance to play it. Anyway, have you subscribed to something like this? Have you ever supported anything like this on Kickstarter? Are you a board game guy, a tabletop guy, a D&D &D guy, or whatever it is, Pathfinder, anything to those effect? Let me know all that good stuff in the comments section below. And what do you think of the Resident Evil 2 board game? With all the expansions and crazy shit that I got, do you think it's going to be ridiculously huge amounts of fun, complexity, and deep gameplay? Or do you think I'm an absolute lunatic? Let me know all that good stuff that we talked about or anything in the comments section below. Hit the appropriate button to let me know how I did on the video and while you're at it, why not head on over, hit the subscribe button and even ring the little notification bell. Granted, getting a notification from YouTube in current year, whoa, current year, it's now 2019. That one threw me off by a second. Uh, <laughs> is, a, is a whole other story about getting a, a notification about a new video upload or a live stream, but hey, at least you can say you tried, am I right? As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the rest of the videos in my channel. So next up, we've got our malformations of G. Good job, Q.